Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to explain Unit 3, Lesson 1, Fossils. So fossils are considered as an exciting world, a story told by something called sedimentary rocks. It tells us about the deep past of the old living organism they lived before us. What is fossils? They are traces and remains of an old living organism that are preserved in something called sedimentary rocks. And there is difference between the word trace and the word remains. What is the difference between them? Let's find out. Traces of an old living organism indicates its activity during its life. Like the worm tunnel that you can see in the picture. This is the worm tunnel. Or the dinosaur footprint, as you can see in the picture. These are called traces. What about remains? Remains are also traces, but they indicate the remains of an old living organism after death. So after the old living organism dies, they leave these traces, like the shark teeth or the dinosaur's skull. These are remains. Okay. We have to learn also about the types of fossils. The types of fossils are four types. The first type is complete body. Second type is mold. Third type is cast. The fourth and the last type is the petrified fossils. Fossils of a complete body. It is a fossil that keeps the whole shape and all the details of the body of the living organism as a result of its rapid burying as soon as it died in a medium that preserves it from decomposition so the body when it dies it's buried fastly in a medium like the snow that preserves it from decaying or decomposition for example the mammoth the mammoth fossil that you can see in the picture is found last century and it was found in the snow as you can see it kept the whole shape in it but mammoth was extinct how was it extinct it was extinct by a snow avalanche occurred in a place called siberia it happened 25,000 years ago so after the death of the mammoth the mammoth buried rapidly in the snow and that is the mammoth fossil that they found and next complete body fossil is called amber fossil as you can see in the picture amber is a solidified resinous matter which was secreted by pine trees in old ages and you can see there are small insects inside. These insects were covered by the resinous matter which solidified and became amber. So these are the complete body fossils. Next we have the mold. A mold is a replica of the external details of the structure of an old living organism left after its death in the sedimentary rocks. They are a copy of the external details of the old living organism, like here in the picture ferns mold, as you can see. Also in the other picture there is a fish mold. So, the mold is a copy of the external details. Next, we have cast. 
cast is a replica of the internal details of the structure of a living organism left after its death in the sedimentary rocks. So mold was the external details, but the cast is the internal details of the structure. Like here, ammonitis fossil, pneumolitis fossil, and trilobite fossil. They are casts. And the last type of fossils is called petrified fossils. They are fossils in which minerals like silica replace the organic matter of an old living organism after its death, of course, part by part, leaving the shape without any change. This process that produces the petrified fossils is called petrification. Petrification is a process where the minerals replaces the organic matter of an old living organism after its death, part by part, leaving the shape without any change. Like the petrified tooth of a dinosaur or the petrified egg of a dinosaur. There is also another example for the petrified fossils, which is the petrified woods. They are fossils which are formed as a result of replacing the wood material of trees with silica giving us details about the life on old plants. So when we study an old plant and get information about its life, we use the silica, the petrified woods. So the area of the petrified forests in Qattamiya is called Wood Mountain. They call these forests Wood Mountain in Qattamiya. Why? because it contains petrified woods, which looks like rocks. It gives you the effect of a rock, but it's actually wood. Here is a picture of the petrified wood. So these are the types of fossils. Last thing we have to study is the importance of fossils. Why would we learn about the types and see pictures of fossils without knowing the importance of fossils? So the first important we get or we have to study is the age determination of the sedimentary rocks. So we use the sedimentary rocks that we find the fossils buried in to determine the age of the fossil and the rocks. So scientists notice that the lower layer of the rocks have fossils that have greater age than the fossils in the upper area. So they were buried first and then another rock layer was built on it and then another fossil was buried in it and so on. Like you see in the picture, the oldest fossil is at D is at D the youngest fossil is at A which is the upper layer the upper layer fossils are named index fossils they are named index fossils they are fossils of organisms that had lived for a short time in the past, then got extinct and was buried in the upper layer of the sedimentary rocks, like we discussed. Second importance is figuring out the paleoenvironment. The paleoenvironment means that we can determine an information about the kind of environment that the old living organisms lived in. For example, the pneumolitis fossils are found in the limestone rocks in El Muqattam mountain and they indicate that this area was a sea floor more than 35 million years ago. Second, we have the ferns fossil as you can see in the picture. 
they indicate that the environment where they lived was hot and rainy. So we can call it tropical environment. The third fossil is coral fossils. They indicate that the environment where they lived was clear, warm and shallow seas. The third importance is studying the life evolution. Living organisms in the past were shaped and they live differently than we are living right now. So the species came each century were different than the others. This is a sign of something called evolution. So studying the fossils we can learn about the evolution, which animal or which species came first and so on. So studying the fossils record, which is the sequence of fossils in sedimentary rocks that we discussed, the difference in layers and so on, showed that life started first in sea, then established on land. So the life that we know started from the sea with sea creatures. And then it continued growing and become on land. Second thing, organisms always developed from simple to complicated. So the early life, living organisms were simple. Now they are complicated. In the plant world, algae appeared before mosses and ferns. Gymnosperms appeared before angiosperms. In animal world, invertebrate animals came before the fish, and then amphibians came, and then reptiles came, and then birds and mammals came. So we can say that the invertebrate animals came before the vertebrate animals. That is Interesting. And fish were the first vertebrate that appeared, followed by amphibians, then reptiles, and finally birds and mammals. Now we came to the last importance of fossils, which is petroleum exploration. Geologists studied under the microscope the samples of the petroleum they found. And they found micro fossils. For example, foraminifera fossil or radiolaria fossils. Both of them are found under the microscope if you look at a sample of petroleum. They indicate the age of rocks in the exploratory wells or the suitable conditions of petroleum formation. Last note you have to know about the lesson is that the Archaeopteryx that you can see in the picture is a fossil found and it was considered that it's a link between reptiles and birds. Thank you for watching and I hope you study the lesson very well.